Howdy, folks. Welcome to part 42. So, after we have taken out Agatha of the Elite Four, we now have the final member of the Elite Four to battle, to take on. This will be the final battle, folks. Oh boy, and is it a tough one. As this really long hallway of purple, uh, clearly foretells, let's say. Ah, I heard about you, Red. I lead the Elite Four. You can call me Lance the Dragon Trainer. Dragons are mythical Pokemon, they're hard to catch and raise, but they're power superior, blah, blah, blah. Basically, he uses Dragon-type Pokemon. At least that's his main Pokemon type. Dragon types are really, really good. Especially defensively. But, uh, I'll talk about them here in a bit. He leads off with Gyarados. What a... One hell of a Pokemon to start out with. Good frickin' lord. Uh, first thing I recommend, Paralyzing. Paralyze the Gyarados. At least do your best to paralyze it, because Gyarados is really fast. So you're gonna want to cut its speed. And what's more, the paralysis, it, it'll, it adds something like a 25% chance that it won't get to move at all. So paralysis is the way to go. Use Thunder Wave, or anything that can inflict paralysis if you don't have Thunder Wave. Another thing, as you saw, his Gyarados knows the move Hyper Beam. It also knows Hydro Pump. Uh, I don't know what else it has. But, yeah. Hydro Pump, we've already discussed. It hits really, really, really fucking hard. But you're going to want to watch out more heavily for the Hyper Beam. The Hyper Beam is what really kicked my ass in this battle. I, I don't know why, but it just did. It is a very strong attack. And the thing that the game's in future generations do to make it less overpowered are not present in this game. Oh boy, I do not know if it there's any kind of a cooldown time for Hyper Beam at all in this generation. I can't remember. But in later generations, after using Hyper Beam, your Pokemon can't move for the turn after that. But in this one, no, no. He could just spam it if he wanted. Anyway, though, Gyarados does have a four times weakness to lightning, so even though his Gyarados is really fucking tough, if you use Thunderbolt, you should be able to take it down within two hits or so. And Flareon's trying to learn Bite, but why the fuck would I teach it Bite? Huh. Anyway, we get to see the first Dragon-type Pokemon we have seen in this whole entire game, and that is Dragonair. Dragonair is the evolved form of Dratini, which we do not see in this playthrough. It's pretty tough. Fortunately, his started off with um, Dragon Rage, which didn't knock me out, but then it uses Hyper Beam, which does knock me out. <laughs> like I said, Dragon-type Pokemon are really, really strong. Uh, their only real weakness in this game... Their only real re weakness is Ice-type attacks. The reason why is because they're... I there are no real Dragon-type attacks in this game. In later games, they're weak against Ice and Dragon-type. They're weak against their own type, much like Ghost are. In this version, however, though, Ice is the only real thing uh, that I can think of that actually is super effective. Uh, some types they're strong against. They're strong against Fire, Grass, Lightning, I believe, um, Water. They have a lot of type advantages, and they are very, very strong, and relatively fast, and they can take decent hits. As you see, I'm struggling a little bit. This is actually looking like where I'm going to go down. Fortunately, though, and I've said this so many times, I really hate to repeat myself to the extent that I have, but the AI in red is not perfect. The, the problem that Pidgeot had in the battle with blue before we got to, before we started on our way to Indigo Plateau and Victory Road and whatnot, his Pidgeot just used agility for like five turns, and Lance's Dragonair does the exact same thing to me here. I don't know if it's for five or not, but it basically, it gives me enough time to fully heal my team, or almost fully heal. I don't think I finished healing, but anyway, in a battle like this, where the opponent's Pokemon can one-shot you almost guaranteed. 
what you're going to want to do, rather than focusing on fully healing health, like using a revive on a Pokemon, then a Hyper Potion to get their health up to max, what you're going to want to do is use the revives and just have them attack at half HP. If they get to go first, then you're going to be able to at least get damage off, and that's much more efficient than reviving using a Hyper Potion and then trying to attack. Because the thing is, is that while that, that takes two turns just to get one Pokemon healed, and that means a good chance that two of your Pokemon are going to get knocked out by the time you get one fully healed. Any of though, as you saw, he has two Dragonairs, so I, I, I assume they're the exact same. But anyway, this takes us to Aerodactyl. His Aerodactyl it can be intimidating, but honestly, it's probably his weakest Pokemon. And the reason for that is because it has a times four weakness to ice, which is very, very, very much a lot. It has low special. It has a low special stat, so ice type attacks are going to hit even harder. As you can see, there is a type issue here, much like against the Tentacool that we faced on the SSN, and then I think there was some other Pokemon. In that grass type move should be normal against Aerodactyl. Not super effective, but normal. But for some reason, they're not. Aerodactyl is also weak against water, which is what I actually opt to do here for certain reasons. Luckily, its Hyper Beam's not as strong as the Dragonair's or Gyarados. So, yeah, Aerodactyl's definitely the weakest link in his team, and you shouldn't have any trouble taking it out. Huh? Hey, Golbat hit 39. Good lord, my Pokemon are so weak for this point. But that takes us to 100%, without a doubt, his strongest Pokemon, which is Dragonite. As you may have guessed, this is the final form of Dratini and the evolved form of Dragonair. It's really fast, it has high defense, high HP, high special, and really fucking high physical attack power. What's more, his Dragonite knows Hyper Beam, which is a bitch in itself to deal with. It knows the move Barrier, which we'll see it use. It knows Agility, which we'll see it use. And it knows Slam. Slam being the weaker link in its move set because of the fact that it's got low accuracy. I mentioned in an earlier part, I'm sure, that we're going to see just how good of a strategy Sand Attack and Double Team is for this whole game. It's really fucking cheap, but it really saves my ass here. Huh. Basically, after you get as many sand attacks as you can off to lower the opponent's accuracy, you then want to use Double Team to boost your evasiveness, making it, making it that much harder for him to hit you. It takes a lot of turns, and a, it actually takes a total of 10 turns <laughs> to get this completely going and whatnot, but the def in a situation like this, the, his Dragonite is 22 levels higher than my Flareon here. It really does help to make it to where he can't hit me. Hyper Beam only has 5 PP, meaning even if he, he... Regardless of whether he hits you or misses, he can only use it 5 times and then it's gone. And then he only has Slam, which has shit for accuracy to begin with. Coupled with the Sand Attacks and the Double Teams. It's going to be very hard for him to knock you out. So, it's, it's a very good strategy against his Dragonite. He's going to keep using Barrier and Agility. Agility not really mattering. It's 22 levels higher than my Flareon. It's going to be faster no matter what. Barrier raising its physical defense, though, be which is kind of problematic because I only have Fire Blast and Body Slam. Body Slam being a really good physical attack, but it's still a physical attack. Fire Blast being a very strong, albeit with not so good accuracy, fire attack, which is a special attack, but you can only use it five times. I get very lucky during the course of fire blasting, though, as you'll see, I believe, after this one. But after this one, I get lucky and I manage to burn Dragonite, which is really what I was going for more heavily than just doing the damage. The thing is, is that the burn's going to constantly hurt him, much like poison, which I I've been kind of dumbing down poison quite a bit for this playthrough, but in this situation, poison is really helpful as well. I recommend it over paralysis and sleep. He does use a hyper potion, which is annoying, but at this point, I've already won. He's just basically prolonging the fight. 
The reason I say I've already won is because even if somehow Dragonite manages to knock out Flareon, which is still possible, there is always a chance that he could hit. Very low, but there is always that chance. And knock out Flareon. Even if he does that, he still has the sand attacks on him, so his accuracy is still hurting. And I guarantee you Blastoise can knock him out because... Dragonite, unlike Dragonair, has a four times weakness to ice attacks, much like Aerodactyl. This makes ice, of, once again, the optimum attack type to use against Dragonite, but because of the strategy I used, it was wiser just to keep with Flareon and whittle him down. But anywho, that was Lance. We beat the game! Huzzah! I am a Pokemon Master. I'm the very best! I still can't believe my dragons lost to you, Red. You are now the Pokemon League champion. Or you would have been, but you have one more challenge ahead. You have to face another trainer. Fuck! His name is Blue. Oh, fuck! That douchebag beat us here? Ugh. Okay, so I guess the next part's the final part. See you then.